Hello everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. Today I wanted to take a couple of minutes briefly just to show you how you go about flashing the bootloader and files outside of the .firmware or .fw file on your ESP32 Game Boy Color. Now, the method that I'm going to show you today involves an Arduino Uno, a few wires. This wire here is jumping reset to ground. You will need to do that. And the final piece that you need is you need a normal five, well, there's six slots, but only five pins, Game Boy adapter. Game Boy Color to be more specific. Now, what you want to do is keep one end, snip the other end off, and you will find that they're color-coordinated wires inside. They're the same as the colors of the wire that I used. For this particular, it's going to be orange, brown, green. Green is the ground. Orange, brown, RX, TX. And they go into the RX and TX slots here. Now, once you've got all of that done, I'm not going to plug it all in, I'm just going to explain, then I'll move to the computer to show you. Once you've got that all plugged in, you want ground, RX, and TX connected, you will then move to your PC. You'll plug your Arduino into the PC, and you will open the Arduino IDE. All you're going to do with this is select the proper COM port and turn on the serial monitor. As long as you see output or display on the serial monitor, you know it's connected and you can now close the Arduino IDE. Next, you're going to have to use the ESP IDF flasher, which is a tool that you can freely download, and I will put a link in the description. At that point, you're going to want to erase and then reflash the device, which I will show you how to do in a moment when I move to the PC and start the next video. That's it for the setup steps. You got your cord, your Arduino, it's plugged into the computer and it's reading the device. Now we're gonna move on and I'm gonna show you the computer screen and that part of the process. It's very simple, only a few buttons. Just a couple of details you have to make sure you get correctly. And this is gonna be the first time in a video where I've actually joined two different videos from two different recordings together to make one video. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that goes. We'll be right back. Okay, so now we're here and we're at our PC. We got our Arduino Uno plugged in and it's connected to the COM port. So now we want to open the serial monitor and you're going to want to connect the wires that I discussed in the previous video to your board. Green is ground, brown is TX, orange is RX. If you get this message here on your screen that you're seeing right now, it's because you've got the wrong baud rate. This one right here is the correct. Now, you're going to want to do that again. You need to in order to get this, you need to hold the select button down with the device powered off, plug in the EXT4 cable, and then turn it back on while still holding select, and that will boot it into this mode. So in a nutshell, hold select, turn the device on with the cable plugged in. The next tool you're going to need is this, Espressif Download Tools. I will link this in the description for you, along with a hard kernel tutorial for the Odroid Go, which is similar to this device that will help you. Now, you want the ESP32 download tool. And you're going to want to copy these exact settings as I have them on my screen. This dump.bin is a file that I will provide. This will replace the bootloader in case of any sort of bricks or accidents or problems with you messing around with things or flashing things. And you're going to need that just in case. It's not likely that you'll brick yourself out of the bootloader, but it is possible. So this video is going to show you just how to fix it. You want to make sure you copy the at address 0x0 as well and don't change any or change all of your settings to match exactly what you see on the screen. 128 megabit, DIO, 40 megahertz, and then flash. If you have an issue with it failing during the flash, plug the device in while holding select, turn it on, and keep holding select until after you click start, and then let go. So this particular process here itself is going to take a couple of minutes to complete. It's not overly complex now that you've got it going. You literally just sit here and let it finish. As you can see in the console, everything's fine. It'll, it won't, the console will never change. It'll just stay here even when it finishes, but it'll tell you on the download panel when it has completed. So in the links, or in the description, I should say, to this video, you're going to find a link to this download tool. 
you're going to find a link to the tutorial from the hard kernel site which gives you further information and there's a third file a, a virtual file that people need sometimes on Windows to get this working that is discussed in the hard kernel tutorial so I strongly suggest you read it I will link that tool in the description as well. it's actually a driver for Windows I'll actually link that in the description as well just in case so you can install it if you do have issues I didn't need to install it but some people have reported that they did need to this right here is where it will say finished once it's completed I predict about another minute or so given how fast it's going right now so it's not overly complex to reflash this particular device but then again that's easy for me to say because I'm a developer I don't think that it's very complex but there is a process to it you do got to get your hands on a Game Boy cable or Game Boy Color slash advanced cable you do have to snip it you do have to solder or splice some wires together and during that process I strongly recommend you do what I do and use the same color of wire this way you don't ever get confused you don't have to remember it just is exactly what it is and also when you look at the diagram of the uh, Game Boy Advance link cable pinout ignore it because that's not how the ESP32 is wired the method that I've given you here is exactly the is to match with the port on the Game Boy Color that's ESP32 it doesn't actually match what the cable itself was intended to do Also, one more time, so you don't have to go back in the video and rewatch all the steps, I'll summarize. With a normal Nintendo branded link cable, the three wires you want are green, brown, and orange. The green wire is ground, the brown wire is TX, and the orange wire is RX. On the Arduino, you also need to take a wire and jump reset to ground. Otherwise, you will not be able to flash your device and this will not work. That's about all you got to do there. And that's about it for the video as well. Everything's finished. It's all good. You can turn your device on now. And that's all you had to do. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial.